Well, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, this section of Genesis that we're heading into now. We're, we're coming now to a transition point in the book of Genesis where the focus of the book is now going to shift to one family in particular, the family of Shem. Uh, and the reason the focus shifts to the family of Shem is because through Shem will come Abraham. And through Abraham will come the Hebrew people. And through the Hebrew people will come the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And so what we see here in, in the Bible, uh, throughout the, the Bible, we see this unfolding story of God's redemption of mankind. If you remember back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, right after the fall, God made this promise that He would send a Redeemer into the world, the seed of of the woman, and now we're watching the story unfold in the pages of the Bible, following the thread that leads to that promised seed of the woman that we know is, is Jesus Christ. And so it's an unfolding story here. That seed of the woman will come through the line of Shem. So that's why we're going to focus now on the line of Shem. So verse 10, we have the genealogy of Shem. And the descendants of Shem are listed for us in verses 10 to 26. Uh, the, the, this genealogy is also found in the record of Jesus' genealogy in Luke chapter 3. And so you can cross-reference that on your own and see that these names that are listed here appear in the lineage of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, in Luke chapter 3. But I want to draw your attention this morning to verse 24. So we're going to skip over all of those names. And we're going to skip down to verse 24 where it says, Nahor lived 29 years and begot Terah. Now, Nahor was the grandfather of Abram or Abraham. So that's where this is going. Verse 26, now Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram. That's Abraham. Nahor and Haran. So here now we're introduced to Abram or Abraham. God will change his name to Abraham in chapter 17, verse 5. Uh, but I'm, I'm probably just going to refer to him as Abraham because that's, that's what we know him as, even though at this point his name is, is, is Abram. The name Abram uh, means exalted father. Abraham means father of a multitude. And God changed his name to Abraham because Abram became the father of a multitude of people. As God promised to make a nation of him, uh, as, as we'll see in our study today. So we're, we're introduced here to Abram. We're introduced here to Abraham. And Abraham is mentioned over 300 times in the Bible He's arguably the most famous man in the Old Testament. He's certainly one of the most influential people in history. Almost one third of the book of Genesis is about Abraham. Now, God spent one chapter describing to us the creation of the heavens and the earth. All of the universe. He will spend 13 chapters describing the life of Abraham to us. That just shows us how important Abraham is. Uh, Abraham was born around 2000 B.C. Uh, and Abraham is unique in that he is called the friend of God. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, God calls him Abraham, my friend. Isn't that great to have God say that about you? Wouldn't you like to hear that? You know, Dan, my friend. You know, that would be wonderful to hear God say that. Uh, Abraham is most noted in the Bible for his faith. His faith in God. Abraham is our role model of faith. Our example of what it means to believe God by faith and to live a life of faith. In Galatians chapter 3, Abraham is described as the father of all that believe. And so he's our spiritual father, Father Abraham, right? 
the father of all that believe. And so as we study the life of Abraham, we begin this look at the life of Abraham and we'll be you know, looking at his life for several weeks. Uh, as we look at his life and his, and his wife Sarah, uh, we'll learn what it means to live by faith in God and what a friend of God looks like. Now, chapter 11 here, at the end of chapter 11, and then into the first few verses of chapter 12, we have Abraham's call. Abraham's call. Look at verse 27 of chapter 11. Now, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot, Lot will be important later on in the story of Abraham and Sarah. That's why Lot is mentioned here. And then verse 28, And Haran died before his father, Terah, in his native land in Ur of the Chaldees. So Abraham was from a place called Ur of the Chaldees. And I have a, I have a map for you if you want to bring the map up for us. Uh, This is the Middle East. You see the Mediterranean Sea there, the Persian Gulf. Down in kind of the bottom right-hand corner, you can see Ur. I have it circled for you. Uh, Abraham and Sarah, they're going to leave Ur. They're going to go north to Haran up there. That's also circled. And from Haran, they're going to go down into the land of Canaan or the promised land. And you might wonder, well, why didn't they just go straight across over to the promised land? Because you can see it's all desert. It's the Arabian desert. So you have to go up and around the desert. So you can see the track they're going to take from Ur of the Chaldees up to Haran and then down into Canaan. I also have a picture for you of Ur of the Chaldees today, the archaeological site. Check it out. Isn't that exciting? Don't you love that kind of stuff? I mean, you just get excited looking at the picture, don't you? I know I do, right? So that's the ruins of the ancient city of Ur of the Chaldees, and you can see in the background, there's a ziggurat. We talked about that last week with the Tower of Babel, that they have those, oh, there's over 30 of them that have been uncovered by archaeologists in that region of, of Babylon and, and Ur. So just imagine, you know, Abraham grew up walking around those streets as a kid. Isn't that cool? Love it. Want to go there and touch those stones. Now, Ur was a major city. In the ancient world, it was a very wealthy city in the ancient world. Uh, Verse 29 says, Then Abraham, now watch, Abraham and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. Her name's going to be changed to Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Uh, Again, Sarai's name will be changed by God to Sarah. Uh, in verse 30 now, look at verse 30, we are told that Sarai, or Sarah, was barren, and she had no children. And, and we're told this here because this will be important to the story in Abraham and Sarah's life. This is, this is going to be part of their God story, of what God does in, in their life. And in the story of the redemption of mankind, it's going to be important. Verse 31 says, And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, remember Haran died, and his daughter-in-law Sarah, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran, and they dwelt there. Verse 32, So the days of Terah were 205 years. We see that the ages have dropped dramatically since the flood, and Terah died in Haran. If you can bring up the map for me one more time, uh, just so again, so you can have a visual. They're down in Ur, they're going to leave, and they're going to travel up to Haran, and they're going to stop there, uh, and Terah dies in Haran, and then they're going to continue the journey onto the land of Canaan.